What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. My name's Chris. I'm going to be your host for today, and this is a quick reminder to check out my last video. I will link it above, five holiday gift ideas for the whiskey lover in your life for an opportunity to win one of the prizes that you see on this table. But let's get into today's video where I try one of my Patreon's four samples he sent me, and we do it double blind. That's right, it's patron flight night, and why not do it? It's Friday night, let's get into it. This is sent to us by Mike Carr. We have the answer key right here, which we will not open until the end. We ended up doing a secret Santa this year. I think we had like 10 or 12 participants. We sent each other three blind samples. We don't know what's in what and who's getting who, but at the end of the day, it's gonna be a lot of fun. But let's get into it. Everybody knows before we get started. Time for the traditional sip. Cheers, y'all. Not too bad. So I am gonna take a couple of notes just so I can remember. Four is a lot to remember. We've got one, we've got two, we've got three, we've got four. And again, I don't know anything about these. I don't know if these are all bourbons, all rise, any type of whiskey could be involved here. I don't know proof, I don't know anything. Double blind, I asked him, I reached out, I said, Mike, you got any hints for me? He never got back to me. But we're starting with number four apparently back here. Not too bad off the rip. Definitely a higher proof if you ask me. I think it's a bourbon, although I'm not sure. Let's take another sip and see if we can figure that out. Definitely seems like a higher proof bourbon to me, maybe a high rye on this as well, but it does seem one dimensional, right? There's good flavors in here, but there's not a lot of flavors in here. Not always a bad thing. Sometimes I like the simplicity behind my bourbons, but at the end of the day, for right now, I'm gonna say this is a high rye, high proof bourbon. We'll try and get back into some specifics at the end if we wanna guess like an actual proof range or anything like that, but let's get into number three. There's literally no ethanol kick on this at all. Going from this to this is absolutely wild. It almost smells like nail polish remover, but yet it doesn't taste that way. And I normally get that on something that's a little higher proof, but this almost has like a perfumey nose to it. Now follow me on this one right now because this is by no means barrel seagrass, but it almost gives me that flavor profile of like a finished rye. I feel like I get apricot on this, some type of pear or something. This is really good, but at the end of the day, there's no way this is over 80 proof. It's got to be 80 proof at most. For right now, I'm just gonna say an 80 proof. I don't even know what type of whiskey this is. It's not a scotch because I feel like I would get more smokiness when it comes to a scotch, but yet uh, peated single malt, it doesn't, I don't get any peatiness on this. I don't know, maybe this is just like a straight up Canadian whiskey or something like that. That's what I'm gonna put, 80 proof Canadian whiskey. We're gonna come back to that because I have absolutely no idea, but let's get over into number two right now. We're back into my wheelhouse with this one. This has got to be another higher proof bourbon right here. When you go from this to this, it's worlds different. These two are very similar so far. Four and two are very similar, and I like them both a lot. It's going to be hard to see which one I like the most out of these two. But as of right now, I'm going to say another high proof bourbon, maybe a, a medium rye. I don't feel like it has like a high rye compared to this one. I feel like I get a little bit more black pepper, a little bit more spice on this one. But this is still right in the realm of these two being very similar. And I think because I just drank this one and it literally has no ethanol on it at all, it's making this seem like the ethanol is a little bit higher. But I'm going to say both of these actually are probably in like that 112 to 120 range. I know that's a little bit of a range right there, but I'd say like 112 to 118. And I think this one's a little bit higher, maybe like 115 to 120. We'll write those down for now. But again, I'm not 100% because this one over here is throwing me off. But let's get into number one real quick. And let me just tell you, this is the way my mind works. When he sent this, all of them were filled to the very top except for number one, which usually means this is something good, right? He doesn't want to get rid of all of it. He doesn't want to give me that extra little eighth of an ounce just because it's something that he really enjoys. So maybe that's just me making it up, Mike, but that's what I'm getting off of this one. Let's try it out. My guess off this, and this is the only one that I've guessed so far when it came to an actual bottle, is an Eagle Rare store pick. I don't know why I think that. It just seems to be what's sticking in the back of the mind. So that's what I'm going to put down for this right now. Eagle Rare store pick. So we know it's 90 proof, maybe like a 10 year age statement, Eagle Rare store pick. As of right now, before we go through it one more time, I'm gonna say that four and two are battling for first and second place and one and three are battling for third and fourth. I think three is beating one as of right now. And I think number two is beating four as of right now, but these two are definitely close. I feel like definitely number one in last place, which is kind of scary to me if it is a Buffalo Trace product that I'm supposed to enjoy. We're going to go back to three here real quick. Again, I don't think this is a bourbon or a rye, but I've been wrong before. So let's figure this out. Let's try it one more time. If this is a bourbon or a rye, I can almost guarantee you it's finished, but I still just can't believe that this is a bourbon or a rye. I've never experienced anything like this, unless it's like something crazy craft, right? Super young, maybe craft finished whiskey that I just haven't had before. But this one, 
again, it's not bad. It's just not for me. And it's just too different when it comes to a whiskey, at least the way I enjoy it. I get so much perfume on this, both on nose and on taste. And then I get that nail polish remover. You know, when you take a sip of something and then it kind of comes back up through your nose, of course you do. That's literally called tasting. That's what I get with that nail polish remover. The question is, is it better or worse than number one? So let's come back to this real quick and figure out which one's number three and which one's number four. I get a lot of oak, a lot of tannins on this, a little bit of leather, a little bit of sweetness, some tobacco leaf on the end of this maybe. I don't like this that much. This isn't my favorite flavor profile, but I don't know if I like it better or worse than number three. I'm gonna say for right now that number one is number four and number three is number three, but let's get into number two, sorry, number four and number two and figure out which one is gonna win this blind. I'm so glad those other two are done and I get to drink really good whiskey right now because whatever these two are, are absolutely fantastic. As of right now, I have number four being a higher proof, but now that I drink these side by side and I'm just going to put them here, Drink Pro is number four and our Bourbon of the Week glass is number two. I'm going to put these side by side just so I can go back and forth and see which one's the higher proof because I kind of think I'm going to switch my mind on this. I think this is actually the higher proof number two rather than number four. Absolutely. Number two is a higher proof. Number four is a little bit lower. I'm just going to switch them. I'm going to say number four is 112 to 115. While I'm going to say that number two is that 115 to 120 proof range, maybe even a little bit higher. Let's go a little bit higher. 120 to 125. I'm going to be honest with you. That last sip sold me. I'm going to go with number four being my number one. So number four is number one. Number three is number three. Number two is going to be number two, and number one is going to be number four. That's the rankings as of right now, but there's only one way to find out what we've got. Let's open our sheet and figure it out. And you can see here, check it out, still sealed. We still got the tape on here and everything. You're going to watch me open it for the first time. See, I couldn't mess this up. Oh, there's a card. What if there's money? No money. Hey Chris, Merry Christmas. Number one, Wild Turkey's Master Keep Bottled and Bond 17 year old. I do not like that. That actually got last place. I thought that was an, oh my goodness, people, is this real? He's messing with me. That cannot be real. Wild Turkey Master's Keep Bottled and Bond 17 year. Not my favorite. Did not like that one bit. I honestly cannot believe that Wild Turkey let me down with that one right there. I am glad I have some more left so I can try it, but let's get into our number three pick, which was actually number three, which was called Swear Jar Six Year Canadian Whiskey, which was 40%. Ladies and gentlemen, I said 80 proof Canadian whiskey for my number three. Absolutely nailed that. Love myself for that one. That is crazy. This again, not bad. I'm just not the biggest Canadian whiskey fan, although I've only had one or two. So there's no grudges against what I got right there. But we got to keep moving through here real quick. We've got number two, which was actually our second place pick, which was Bullet Bourbon Barrel Strength Batch Number 5, coming in at 62.7%. That's 125.4%. We said 120 to 125. Not a bad pick, if you ask me. Bullet Bourbon puts out some very good cash strength or barrel strength stuff. If you have an opportunity to pick it up, definitely do. Nailed that one, though. We're basically two for three at this point. We're going to, the wild turkey's got to get out of here. I don't want to talk about that one anymore. But listen, coming in first place was none other than Weller, foolproof, 57%, Dixon, Deadman, single barrel pick. I said 112 to 115. This is 114. I've got my proofs down pat. This was absolutely perfect. We're going to forget about the wild turkey like I mentioned before. That's actually crazy to me. I'm going to pour up a little bit more of this real quick just because there's no way. There's no way this is 17-year-old wild turkey and I did not love it. Bottled in Bond 2, 100 proof. This tasted more like what I would figure the Weller would taste like than anything else. One more sip. Cheers, y'all. You know, the way the brain works is kind of crazy because now that I sip this, knowing that I'm supposed to love it because it's Wild Turkey 17 year, I love it. But at the end of the day, we're going off of the blind samples, what I thought before I knew what it was, which is why we do it. And this came in last place behind a Canadian 80 proof. Can you guys believe that? But listen, make sure you check me out on Instagram at Bourbon of the Week. Go click that follow button over there. Again, check out my last video for an opportunity to win some great prizes this holiday season. Please don't drink and drive. Always drink responsibly and stay healthy, stay happy, stay drinking. Cheers, y'all. Not my wild turkey.